uh, welcome back to our discussion on the topic rural development last session we talked about rural credits its importance the problem faced by rural economy farmers especially in availing um, loans and credits and how the government tries ways and means to bring about solving those problems today we'll talk about the second aspect of the rural economy that is on marketing we'll talk about it in the sense we'll come to know about the meaning the problems faced by rural uh, economy how the government tries to solve that, those problems and at the same time um, alternative marketing channels being available to rural economies first let's define the agricultural marketing system uh, mark, agricultural marketing system is the process that involves um, assembling, you bring them together, the goods, storage, process, transport, packaging, grading on different different qualities, and distribution across the country. That's the marketing system for agricultural products. So how the system um, being experienced before independence Prior to independence, farmers, will, while selling their produce to traders, suffered from faulty weighting. The, the weighing, I mean to say, weighing of those goods. It's being faulty um, done by traders for their own benefits at the disadvantage of the poor farmers. And also at the same time, they manipulated the accounts, the um the records of how many kgs how many tons and the price and price that should be getting by the farmers so that's the problem they face when they have to sell to these middlemen farmers secondly they did not have enough required information or the prices prevailing in the market so they do not know because information is not available to them so that's why they're being cheated and 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 end up selling at low price, end up losing from their endeavor. And thirdly, farmers also did not have proper storage system to keep back the produce for selling later at the better price. That's the, that's the problem. If you don't have storage facilities, you have to sell immediately after you um after the matured, it's not that you you have to sell and you you know when when you sell and uh, at the same time the price tends to come down but if there are storage facilities means you can keep and sell in the future the dates when the price is um acceptable but that is not the case so we find farmers facing problems from the middlemen the way they weigh the products the way they keep the accounts they do not know the price and they can't store for future uh, um, business. It's not because they have to sell on the spot at the time when the produce is taken from the field. That's the problem they face then. Even now, 10% of the goods produced in the farm were wasted due to lack of storage. Even now, there is a lack of storage facilities and go-downs uh, across India. So we need state intervention. We need the government to do to take necessary steps, especially to regulate activities of these private traders to uh, help the um, helpless farmers. So what are the government initiative? Let's go to that part. Second part. The first step the government is doing is regulation of markets to create orderly and transparent marketing conditions regulation of market so that the price is given all should know the price it's orderly it's transparent nothing is kept uh, unknown to the poor farmers even they go they come a long way from the villages however to do that they need to uh, develop about 27,000 rural periodic markets as regulated market price marketplaces to realize the full potential of rural market. So that's a long way to go. The government has tried to do that. If that um, mission is accomplished, we can say farmers will be able to get their due. So that is the ongoing process, regulation of market. 
Secondly, government tries to provide physical infrastructure to rural areas like road, railways, warehouses, go downs to store, coal storage for vegetables and all, and processing unit so that they can uh, further um, um, improve upon the product they produce for selling over a long period of time. That's the second. Um, aspect of what the government tries to do even now the current infrastructural facilities are not are quite inadequate to meet the growing demand so uh things we know government realized but still is a challenge still now the third aspect is the cooperative marketing because by combining together the goods by the farmers they'll be able to realize a fair price a good price that they deserve for the products not it that is the third aspect. So these one, two, three aspects are important to support farmers getting the right price. And when you talk about cooperative, there is one example of milk cooperatives where the milk producers, they come together as an association. By doing so, they'll be able to um, produce more, sell more and get a commanding price, a price that uh, they'll be able to uh, to sell profitably and that's the way uh, has been experienced especially in Gujarat that's one of the example of cooperative society cooperative societies you understand one farmer is weak but um, together through association through a cooperation it can become get, come together uh, combine the produce and sell in bulk However, cooperatives have received a setback during the recent past due to the inadequate coverage of farmer members. Because when you form a cooperative site, you have to uh, enroll as membership. Not it, but you find in India, these cooperatives do not cover a majority of farmers. That's one point. Second point is why cooperatives, they weak because of the lack of appropriate link between the marketing and the processing cooperative cooperatives that is the second weakness there is not much of the uh, connection between the market and these processing cooperatives that they have formed and thirdly there is inefficient financial management money is the important input important aspect important factor in determining this uh, kind of cooperatives but even there you find there is mismanagement of funds and lastly, the government also tried to, through policy instruments like assurance of minimum support prices for agricultural products so that the price should not go to that minimum. Not it. When the government fixes the price of, uh, so to say, of cotton should not go, for example, rupees 20 per kg. Not it. So the farmers need not sell below that. They, that means it's it's the price fixed the government they can sell above 20 but these middlemen cannot charge below 20 that's one of the guaranteed um, assistance given by the government that the price should not go to the minimum otherwise um, they will be losing the business i mean these farmers will not be able to profit maintenance of buffer stocks of sweet and rice by the fci so the fci uh, food corporation of india should take um, the supply from the farmers and stock at the go downs to create a buffer stock for the future a stock you understand so that when it needs through the fci can uh, provide to the needy and distribution of food grains and sugar through pds this is the um, fair price shop system public distribution system through rationing not that that is another way for helping the rural people so the food element very important because it helped directly the farmers in supporting the price in um, acquiring the, the product by the fcis and and also provision of food grains after the, that to the uh, majority of indian poor however despite these government intervention the good intention of the government private trade by money lenders rural political elites rich people in the rural areas big merchants and rich farmers 
predominates agricultural markets. That's the problem. Majority of farmers are poor, but when it comes to the market, these people are um, dominating. That's why um, most of the time, these small farmers fail to get what the government intends to. So the need for the government intervention is eminent, particularly when a large share of agricultural products is handled by private sector. So there is a need for um, more intervention by the government in order to be able to see um, the intention go through. Some scholars argue that commercialization of agriculture offers tremendous scope for farmers to earn higher income provided the government intervention is restricted. However, there is some uh, school of some thoughts by scholars that they say we need to commercialize um, um, able, to, uh, I mean to say, agricultural crops selling uh, like agri industrial products. By doing so, farmers will earn more and government should not intervene too much. So that is another way, but uh, that's the debate. It's up to you. How do you, uh, what's your opinion? It's not it. It's better for the government to intervene and provide all those that four as elements that we have talked about or simply uh, go forward and commercialize agriculture like a industrial products. That's the point to note. There are emerging alternative marketing channels nowadays as an example to see that has helped farmers directly and that alternative marketing channel is farmer directly sell farmers are sellers at the same time they sell directly not through middlemen but doing so it enhances their incomes and revenue example of those kind of direct access of farmers are vis a -vis, um, consumers like in Punjab, Apni Mandi, Haryana Rajasthan, Hadas Parmandi Pune, right to Bazaars, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Usavar Sandis in Tamil Nadu. Some of these alternative marketing channels where farmers sell directly and they get the price that they um, charge. It's not it. And they get it far more better than when they sell to middlemen. Several national, another aspect of um, alternative channels, several national and multinational fast food chains um, are increasingly entering into contracts or alliances with farmers. These fast food chains, the, they procure directly from the farmers. I mean, why they need those um, uh, agricultural products? Because they sell in their uh, shops or in the malls, isn't it? Or it can be... Um, eateries it can be any uh, any fast food chains you understand that sells directly to the farmers but they they get the inputs not from the market but from the farmers helping the farmers this encourage them to cultivate farm products like vegetables and fruits not that we have so many uh nowadays uh retail outlets that acquire these products from farmers it can be you can think of oh, big bazaar you can think of reliance fresh you can think of even like McDonald or um, KFCs, these kind of um, fast food chains, instead of going to the market, they tie a contract with farmers so that farmers provide to them. And by doing so, they provide them with not only seeds and other inputs, but also assured, very importantly, assured procurement of the produce at predetermined price. There is an agreement that they will take their, I mean, the farmer's output already been agreed upon, and the price is also pre decided, fixed, even before that product has been uh, produced. So, that is um, like a guaranteed um, contract to the farmer so that they know by cultivating there is already a market for them, there is also a price known to them. So, that's very helpful in um, enhancing their activity and enhancing the, their income. Such arrangements will help in reducing the price risk of farmers and this also expand the markets for farm products. So that's about the um, 
kind of uh, arrangement in some of the areas for the farmers to directly sell either by themselves to the mark uh, to the consumers in the market or through contracts with these fast food chains so what do we see uh, we see the the meaning of marketing which use all those assembling transportation all we've seen the four initiatives taken by the government you can see also the problems that they face by rural um, farmers and also alternative channels that are available as um, a model for others that can, can follow okay so that's about second aspect of rural areas that's very important marketing